हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आयुषी पालीवाल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल स्कैनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप अंडर द पेपर नैनो साइंस एंड नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी फर्स्ट सो स्टूडेंट्स आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल you will be able to learn the following first the principle of scanning electron microscopy second the instrumentation of sem thirdly we will describe each and every component of sem next we will discuss about the magnification of sem lastly the sample preparation of sem will be discussed in this module so students let us start with a basic introduction about the module electron microscopes are scientific instruments that uses a beam of energetic electrons to examine the objects on a very very fine scale electron microscopes they are developed due to the limitations of the light microscopes which are limited by the physics of light in early 1990s this theoretical limit had been reached and it was a scientific desire to see the fine details of the interior structure of organic cells this required 10000x plus magnification which was not possible using the current optical microscopes so the first scanning electron microscope sem is debuted in 1998 with the first commercial instrument in 1996 its late development was due to the electronics involved in the scanning the beam of electrons across the sample the transmission electron microscope m was the first type of electron microscope to be developed and is patterned exactly on the light transmission microscope except that a focused beam of electron is used instead of the light to see through the specimen it was developed by the name by the by the max noll and ernst rusk in germany in 1991 scanning electron microscopy working principle so students let us first discuss about the principle of sem sem belongs to the family of electron microscopes which produce images of an object by scanning its surface with highly focused electron beam the process involves the interaction of electrons with the atoms of an object creating signals containing information of object's composition and topography so arrangement of constituent atoms is studied by 2d beam scanning upon the sample surface and image acquisition from collected secondary electrons scan pattern is generated by the electron beam and the image is formed by merging the beam's position and the detected signal let us now discuss about the instrumentation of sem the basic components used in electron optical system are the source of electrons called as electron gun lenses scanning coils detectors to collect the signals sample stage 
display data output devices, infrastructure requirement, and lastly, the power supply. And we also, we should have the vacuum system, the cooling system, vibration free floor, and a room which is free of ambient, which is electric and magnetic fields. Let us now describe the each component of SEM. First is electron beam, which is shown in this figure. It has two variables, that is energy and current. The voltage is variable from about 1 to 60 kilo electron volt. And the current from 1x to the power minus 7 to 10 to the power minus 12 amperes. These values are specific to the instrument model. Next is electron gun. It is used to produce fine electron beam, also called as electron probe. There are several different types of electron gun which are used. These are TE thermionic emission gun, FE field emission gun, SE short key emission gun. Let us now discuss these three types of guns one by one. TE thermionic emission gun, a thin tungsten wire filament which is acting as the cathode to generate thermoelectrons by heating the filament at 2800 Kelvin. So by applying a positive voltage of about 1 to 30 kilovolt to the metal plate which is acting as anode in order to collect these thermoelectrons. So by applying negative voltage to the Venelt electrode placed between the anode and the cathode, current of the electron beam is adjusted. This electrode also helps in focusing the electron beam. Thinnest point of the beam, as shown in this figure, as crossover, which is about 15 to 20 micron diameter, is regarded as the actual electron source. LAB6 crystal is used as the cathode. It is used to reduce the spot size and requires higher vacuum due to its higher activity. Next type of gun is field emission gun. It provides high resolution, works on field emission effect, that is when high electric field is applied to the metal surface. A thin tungsten wire act as the cathode, wield it to the tungsten single crystal whose tip is curved with a radius of about 100 nanometer known as emitter. Electrons are emitted from the emitter through tunneling effect when positive voltage was applied to the extracting electrode. So here the holes are treated in the extracting electrode to allow emitted electrons to flow through it. Then electron beam containing some energy is obtained by applying the voltage to the accelerating electrode present beneath the extracting electrode. So in Fe, gun energy spread is less because no heating is required and also electron beam diameter is 5 to 10 nanometers. It requires ultra high vacuum of the order of 10 to the power minus 8 pascal. SE or the short key emission gun. This type of gun 
works on short key emission effect that is when high electric field is applied to the heated metal surface now here a tungsten single crystal which is having a tip radius of around few hundred nanometer coated with zirconium oxide acting as the cathode now here the zirconium oxide coating reduces the work function to enhance the emission current at low cathode temperature thermo electrons are shielded from the emitter by applying negative voltage to the suppressor electrode so the basic advantage of this type of gun is the electron beam current is highly stable because emitter is placed in ultra high vacuum of the order of 10 to the power minus 7 pascal it produces larger probe current the construction of short key emission gun is shown in this figure let us now discuss about the lenses to produce a finest beam of electron with desired crossover diameter therefore two level lens system used are condenser and the objective lens made of metal cylinders with cylindrical hole which operates in vacuum these lenses are located beneath the electron gun so the magnetic field is generated in the inner part of the lenses to focus or defocus the beam so students this figure shows the formation of electron probe by the lenses let us now discuss about the role of condenser lens and the objective lens role of condenser lens condenser lens action is related to the probe size if it is strengthened then probe size is narrowed with a small ratio of b by a whereas it is weakened then probe size is broadened now here c1 and c2 lenses controls the beam current by varying the size and the intensity of beam spot aperture with a small hole in it made of a metal placed between the two condenser and objective lens to allow the beam to pass through it to reach the objective lens so resolution is dependent upon the aperture as it controls the spot size let us now discuss the role of objective lens it is used for focusing and determining the final diameter of the probe detector characteristics of the sample are measured at different beam position to form an image so secondary electrons they are emitted from the sample and are measured using secondary electron detector and the construction of the secondary electron detector is shown in this figure secondary electron detector is consisting of a scintillator coated at the detector tip and a high voltage of 10 kV is applied to it the secondary electrons emitted from the specimen gets magnetized towards this positive voltage also 
this secondary electron collection is supported by supplementary electrode the collector placed before the scintillator by applying few volts to this collector so when they hit the scintillator light is produced which is guided to pmt photomultiplier tube through light guide then light is converted to electrons which are amplified as electric signal this detector is fabricated by everhart and thomley therefore termed as et detector for higher resolution in the sim ttl through the lens detectors are used which consist of secondary electron detector above the objective lens display unit and the recording system the output in the formation of amplified electronic signal is sent to the display unit to form a sem image scanning is synchronized with the electron beam scan and brightness which depends upon the number of secondary electrons emitted on the display unit appearing on the monitor screen previously crt cathode ray tube was used as a display unit but these days it is replaced by lcd that is liquid crystal display extremely fast scan speed is used while focusing the observation and slow speed used for capturing or saving the image the microscope column from and the specimen chamber is kept under high vacuum that is 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 4 pascal so diffusion pump is used to evacuate these components for oil free environment turbo molecular pump is used so for fsm sputter ion pump is used as fsm is ultra high vacuumed let us now discuss about the interaction of electrons with specimen electrons entering the specimen get scattered within it and loses its energy gradually upon getting absorbed within it scattering range within the specimen depends upon number 1 the energy of electrons that is more energy more scattering elements atomic number z making the sample more z less scattering density of constituent atoms more density less scattering so monte carlo enabled us to understand this phenomenon and this figure shows us the monte carlo simulation showing the scattering behavior of electrons within the specimen let us now discuss about the acceleration voltage effects higher the voltage higher is the penetration depth of the beam within the sample thereby providing the inside information of the specimen but spoiling the specimen surface contrast due to broadening of the spot size inside the sample therefore it is suggested to view the surface structure lower acceleration voltage is used so students this figure shows us the scattering the overlap of the internal structure information on the specimen surface let us now discuss about the sample stage it is a motorized plate 
which has movement in three directions x y and z controlled by feeding the value in the software the samples are supported on it and move smoothly in the required direction x and y the two horizontal movement they are used to change the field of view whereas the z represents the vertical movement which is required for the image resolution as well as the depth of focus along with these movements rotation and tilting they are also possible also the stage movement can be controlled manually through single click of a mouse let us now discuss about the depth of focus sometimes when top side of the specimen is focused on the bottom it goes out of focus so for some systems this depth of focus depends upon the two variables first is the aperture size and second is the working distance when aperture or aperture angle is small then depth of focus will be larger on the other hand when the aperture or aperture angle is larger the depth of focus will be smaller the parallel electron probe entering through smaller aperture angle then the image remains focused even through the focus is varied significantly and when electron probe entering it at some angle through the larger aperture angle then images goes out of focus even though the focus is varied slightly which is clearly shown in this figure characteristics that can be viewed by the same technique first is topography the surface features of an object or how it looks its texture direct relation between these features and material properties second is morphology the shape and the size of particles making up the object direct relation between these structures and material properties third is composition the elements and compounds that the object is composed of and the relative amounts of them so there is a direct relation between the composition and material properties lastly we have the crystallographic information from the sem technique that is how the atoms are arranged in the object direct relation between these arrangements and material properties let us now discuss about the magnification of sem magnification is yet another parameter of the performance of scanning electron microscopy magnification in a sem can vary in the range of around of the order of magnitude or from 10 to 500000 times unlike the optical and transmission electron microscopes magnification in sem does not depend on the objective lens power the condenser and objective lenses only focus on the beam to a spot and do not form the image of the object further sem can even work without the condenser and the objective lenses the since the electron gun itself generates a highly focused electron beam 
but it may not be able to achieve high resolutions. Like the scanning probe microscopy, magnification in a SEM comes from the ratio of the dimensions of the raster on the specimen and the display screen. So for a fixed display screen, reducing the dimensions of the raster on the object can lead to a higher magnification and vice versa. Thus, the magnification can be regulated by the current fed to the XY scanning coils and voltages on XY deflector plates. The numerical value of magnification is determined by the ratio of the length of the monitor versus the length of the scan on the sample. That is M is equal to L monitor divided by L scan. Let us now discuss about the SEM sample preparation. First, we dry the specimen SEM sample. Now, conducting samples provide a path to earth for the beam electrons and therefore require to special preparation. Insulating materials, they however, however require a thin coating of conductor in order to prevent the charging. Sample preparation it is done. In order to eliminate the sample charging, the few steps they are followed. So charging, a thin noble metal coating of about 10 nanometer is done on the sample because metal film is highly stable and its secondary electron yield is higher. Too thin coating is generally not preferred because continuity is lost. Low accelerating voltage. Now low kV value of about 1 kV can even scan the insulating samples because number of incident electrons becomes equal to the number of emitted secondary electrons. That means sample is not yet charged. The observation in this case, secondary electrons yields are higher as electron beam is entering at an angle. So low vacuum SEM observations. So on decreasing the vacuum increases the gas molecules within the sample chamber which gets ionized due to electron and thus on reaching the specimen as positive ions neutralizes the charging. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. First, we discussed about the principle of scanning electron microscopy. Secondly, the instrumentation of SEM was discussed in detail. Thirdly, each component of SEM was described in this module. We discussed about the magnification of SEM. Lastly, how the samples are prepared for SEM analysis have been discussed in this module. Thank you.